The word xenotransplantation means transplantation between species. And in this case, what we're talking about is transplanting a pig organ into a human. So that's what we just did. And that was the first time that that's ever been done successfully. In September 2021, Dr. Robert Montgomery and his team at NYU performed a first-of-its-kind experimental surgery. They got a pig kidney to function while attached to a person. This was a major breakthrough because in the United States alone, there are around 90,000 sick people awaiting kidney transplants and nowhere near enough donors. It's one of the longest stretches of road in the country. Look at that billboard. In theory, animal organs could one day fill the gap. But when it comes to swapping parts between species, there's still a lot of scientific and ethical questions left to answer. Here's what's next for xenotransplantation. Can you start by just sort of telling me a little bit about your work and what sort of led to this very exciting pig to human transplant development. So on a Friday afternoon, we got a call that um, from our local organ procurement organization that there was a candidate, you know, for this study. The candidate had wanted to be an organ donor, but after being declared brain dead, their organs were sadly not suitable for transplantation. I talked to the family about this other opportunity, which is basically whole body donation. They were very disappointed that um, the organs weren't able to be placed, but really liked this idea that their loved one, who was a very altruistic person, could, you know, make some significant impact on, on science and a gift to humanity. Dr. Montgomery is chair of the Department of Surgery at NYU Langone and director of the NYU Langone Transplant Institute. We then flew our team once we got consent down to um, where the, the pigs are housed, genetically edited pigs, and they procured a kidney and brought it back. At the same time, we prepared um, the recipient um, for the transplant. Instead of putting the organ in the abdomen, we attached it to the blood vessels at the top of the leg so that we could look at the kidney the whole time and take biopsies on a regular basis to look under the microscope to see if there was any evidence of rejection. Montgomery monitored the kidney and its recipient in a specially built critical care unit for two and a half days. The kidney was still working absolutely fine at that point, but that was what the protocol you know, called for. This research is so important because the U.S. is facing a massive donor organ shortage. And more than any other organ, we need kidneys, a lot more kidneys. Right now, because we're in this scarcity crisis, we only offer transplantation to a small portion of the people who could actually benefit from it. People with kidney disease who are waiting for a donor or aren't deemed sick enough for the transplant list are often treated with dialysis. This involves getting hooked up to a machine that does the blood cleaning work of a kidney, usually several times a week. It's a process that's painful, time consuming, and a lot less beneficial than a transplant. On all accounts, transplantation is a better solution for kidney failure than dialysis. Better quality of life, people live on average twice as long when they get a transplant, and it saves a lot of money as well. Every year, more than 6,000 living people in the U.S. donate organs, though most of our organs come from dead people who signed up as donors before they passed away. And yet, very few potential donors actually die in a way that allows their organs to be reused, leaving sick Americans in desperate need. In the U.S., at least 17 people die waiting for an organ transplant every day. It's really not a sustainable way of doing things when the incidence of kidney failure continues to go up every year. And um, only about 25 or 30 percent, you know, the patients are going to um, get a transplant. Which is why a huge new pool of organs from animals could be world changing. This isn't a new idea. For hundreds of years, scientists have tried to rehouse animal bits in human bodies. As you might imagine, most of those early sheep's blood transfusions and chimpanzee testicle transplants didn't work out too well. In the late 20th century, transplants between humans started seeing success as drugs and surgical methods drastically improved. But animal-to-human experiments, often using organs from primates, 
like baboons or chimps, still faced seemingly insurmountable problems. The baby who made medical history after living for three weeks with a transplanted baboon's heart died last night after her kidneys began to fail. A transplant patient lived more than two months this summer with the liver of a baboon. Aside from the scientific challenges, over time, the idea of snatching organs from our closest animal relatives became increasingly unpopular. In some non-human primates um, over, over the last probably 30 or 40 years, there's been substantial research to show that um, they have really strong cognitive abilities. So the closer they start to appear to have the kinds of emotions and cognitions that humans have, many people feel that we should not be using those animals. Karen Mashke is a research scholar at the Hastings Center, a bioethics research institute in New York. She currently studies ethical issues around xenotransplantation. Scientists in the 90s started looking at the use of pigs. They're actually, their, their organ sizes are actually pretty good in terms of compatibility with humans. They breed fast, they have big litters. They have a lot of similarities in terms of DNA structure. Pigs have become the organ of choice, you know, the organ donor of choice in terms of the animal world. In the past, transplanting a pig's kidney into a human would have been impossible. One of the main problems was alpha-gal. It's short for galactose alpha-1,3 galactose a sugar found in all mammals, except for humans and other primates. When it comes to transplants, the sugar also triggers a swift immune response in humans. Our bodies flat out reject any organs from alpha-gal animals. We all have um, what are called natural antibodies against that sugar. And so that has really prevented pig to human transplants in the past. But scientists have been able to genetically engineer pigs knocking out factors that cause organ rejection in humans, like the alpha-gal sugar. It's a complicated genetic manipulation, um, genetic editing that occurs that then becomes part of the, um, the, the line of, of pigs that we use for this um, study. Trademarked as gal-safe pigs, the animals are bred by Revivicor, a subsidiary of biotech firm United Therapeutics. In December 2020, these gal-safe pigs received FDA approval. It was the first time the agency ever approved an intentionally gene-altered line of domestic pigs, both for use as food and for potential medical applications. There are some nuances and, and some other factors that um, have to be taken into account when you're talking about uh, an organ from an animal and um, trying that in a human for the first time. We already kill more than 100 million pigs every year for food in the U.S. So adding thousands more, especially to save human lives, might seem like a small price to pay. But for some animal advocates, using pigs isn't much better than apes or monkeys. There's still a lot of opposition to using animals in research. Many have opposition to using animals for any reason. So a lot of people don't believe in using animals for food products or for any reason whatsoever. Some people might have concerns about the fact that the animal has actually been genetically engineered. Others might have religious objections to animal organ transplants. Or maybe you just find the idea of having a little pig in ya too weird or unnatural to stomach. Whether or not you agree with any of these sentiments, they can matter in the adoption of a new technology. One of the main goals of this project is to get stakeholder input, particularly from patients. Even if 100% of the population said, yes, use organs for pigs, no problem, you can't do it unless it's medically and scientifically good. One concern is zoonotic disease, illnesses that might transfer from animals to humans. It's an issue people are particularly aware of right now, given COVID-19's likely origins in animals, like bats. In the case of xenotransplants, as in many areas of life, the trick is to avoid pervs. With pigs, the main concern is what's called PERV, porcine endogenous retrovirus. And again, I'm not the expert on it, but it's a longstanding concern because um, it can be transmitted to humans and it can be very serious infectious disease. Even after success with brain dead people, anyone signing up for the first pig kidney trials will be gambling with their lives. Trials are, after all, experiments and people may very well die from zoonotic illness, organ rejection, or some factor we haven't even thought of yet. It's the only way xenotransplantation can become a reality. But we still always have to ask, how much risk or harm can we abide in order to get there? And is it justified by the potential future benefit? So the question is, geez, who's gonna get access to those clinical trials? And right now it appears that um, 
The FDA has suggested that it has to be people who are really ill and possibly don't have a lot of time to live and maybe not even be eligible to be on the wait list. That's all to be determined when um, this process goes forward. Obviously, we did this intermediate step because there was not, you know, the risk of harm to the recipient of the transplant because that person being maintained, you know, on a ventilator. The September transplant was a proof of concept and a historic first, but there's still a very long way to go. The NYU team hasn't even published the results of their experiment in a medical journal. Knowing a pig kidney will function without rejection for a few days is a far cry from knowing it will work for weeks or months or years. There's promising data from experiments on non-human primates. Monkeys have survived more than a year after pig kidney transplants. In a single living person. I think within the next year or two, there are going to probably be several first in living human trials. I think what we just did will propel that and give us increased confidence that, that there's not gonna be an immediate um, rejection of the organ and the organ's going to function. And then the question will be, you know, what happens over the long term? And, and, and that's where the focus is going to be. The field of xenotransplantation is moving fast. This January, a different team at the University of Maryland transplanted a genetically modified pig heart into a terminally ill man for the first time. The recipient survived the transplant and is reportedly awake and recovering. How long the new heart will last is anyone's guess. We're in uncharted territory. Dr. Montgomery has also recently replicated his own groundbreaking surgery, successfully attaching another pig kidney to a brain-dead body donor. To him, this research is also a very personal mission. He's not just a surgeon. He's a heart transplant recipient. It had a lot of special meaning to me to, to make this advancement on very, very close to the third anniversary of my own transplant. I have a genetic heart disease um, that, you know, I've been dealing with for my whole professional life and had to get very ill in order to receive a heart transplant because that's the reality that we're in now where there aren't enough organs and really, you know, almost died um, many times before I was deemed to be sick enough to have a heart transplant. And I was very lucky to have made it through many cardiac arrests. And so, you know, my hope is that having an unlimited source of organs from um, pigs will prevent people in the future to have to go through what I had to go through to actually, you know, have a successful transplant from um, a human organ.